great. Thank, thank you, David. Um, this is my first time on uh, Watch List and uh, happy to be presenting to you uh, this morning or afternoon if you're in the East Coast there. Uh, we're listed also on NASDAQ. So we have two ticket codes there, IMC and IMRN. And I'll just get you to move through the uh, safe harvest statement quickly, just to note that. Uh, look, we have um, up the top there, you'll see BMY Mellon. Uh, they're the uh, holder of the American Depository Receipts, uh, the NASDAQ uh, listed shares. That's approximately 35% of our share holding and the rest of the shares uh, trade here in uh, Australia. You can see uh, on the bottom left there two key numbers. So market cap around 17 million and also importantly uh, cash of around 17 million as well. So not presently looking to raise cash. We have uh, sufficient cash to see through the programs that we're currently uh, working on. I'd like to talk to you about those today. So next slide, please. I thought I'd introduce this slide. This is actually one of our advertisements that goes on uh, Facebook, and it's an example of application of our technology. So this is for Travelam. Um, those of you that travel to uh, Bali or to uh, somewhere else in a in a hot, warm climate, uh, you'd be more than familiar with travellers' diarrhoea being a big issue. Now, our, our product, uh, Travelam, um, prevents this from happening. So it's... Uh, Certainly a, a popular product for Australians uh, and it's available all across uh, uh, pharmacies in Australia. And we're just trying to replicate that now in uh, the US first and then into uh, Canada. Uh, next slide, please. Um, as you can see here, um, fully established in retail pharmacy in Australia, but not in the US and Canada. We were in Canada uh, prior to uh, the pandemic, but as you would imagine, uh, the traveller's diarrhoea product didn't sell very well when people weren't uh, travelling. So we're just going through the process of getting back into Canadian pharmacy and just starting the process of getting into um, US pharmacies. Uh, it's, only, it's an annual process for uh, category reviews uh, uh, to pop up and uh, we're in the process of uh, applying for one of those now in, in a, uh, a retail chain in, in the US. Uh, we do sell B2B in uh, all key markets in the US. It's uh, uh, recently launched on Amazon.com on our own shop front, and that's doing very, very well. Uh, some links in the slide there if you want to have a look at uh, online purchasing of Travelan Protectin, uh, which is a product similar to Travelan, but also for gut and uh, liver health. And Oborn uh, Health Supplies uh, sells Protectin across uh, the natural practitioner market uh, across uh, Australia. Internationally, we're looking to uh, get into other markets. Uh, uh, through distribution uh, arrangements. We're looking at other channels as well, you know, things like cruise ships and uh, airlines and the like. And uh, so that there's a good growth potential moving forward. forward. And uh, let me have a look at the next slide and I can tell you more about the uh, the market potential. So travellers' diarrhoea market is uh, large and growing. Um, obviously, uh, there are industry tailwinds, uh, travel picking up significantly. So there's some statistics there. So uh, you know, Australian Bureau of Statistics and the equivalent in the US publish uh, um, people that are traveling uh, overseas uh, to high risk markets. And uh, you can see that uh, on average, uh, about 77% of those in 2019, uh, the current rate in Australia, that, that at the leading edge is getting closer to uh, 90%. So we're almost at pre-pandemic uh, international travel levels in Australia and similarly, in the in the US. So both markets are approaching those pre-pandemic levels and that's the reason why our sales are, are doing so well. So in uh, FY23 in Australia alone, we did 1.16 million and in the US, uh, 0.64 million. And you can see the, the big percentage uh, increases. I didn't compare to last year because that's a, a low travel uh, year, but if I compare to the pre-pandemic period back in uh, FY20, so that's uh, 19, 19, 2019 to 2020, uh, we're even higher than that. And uh, we've, uh, in Australia, just uh, uh, exceeded uh, what we did last year, even though we're only a few months into the new financial year. So sales are doing very well. And that's not surprising when you have a look at the bottom right there, what the market potential for a product like Travelan is. So in the US and in the EU, you're talking some 83 and $50 million market potential if we're able to penetrate 15% uh, of that uh, travel market. And that travel market is quite big. You can see the Centers for Disease Control estimate that in these uh, high-risk countries, uh, 30 to 70% of travelers do experience travel hysteria. So why wouldn't somebody want to take a product like Travelan that gives them the opportunity to prevent that risk? 
Um, at the moment, there is no direct competitor for, for Travelan. Uh, it's our job to make people aware of its existence. So there's no registered medicine. Uh, there's no other over-the-counter products that have claims for um, preventing uh, um, travellers' diarrhoea in, in these uh, US and European markets, so big uh, market potential for us. And I've just brought on board a chief commercial officer that has experience in both the uh, uh, GSK, so GlaxoSmithKline and Procter and Gamble, that's well uh, versed in uh, marketing a product like uh, Travelan in the consumer health market. So, uh, next slide, please. Let me just tell you what our product is. So, you, you've probably heard of bovine colostrum. Uh, it's rich in many biofactors and they've got long names there, so I won't read them out, but generally they're good for you. So, this is that first milk uh, that comes from the, from the cow that uh, is good for the calf. And uh, it all, all, all mammals have it, so even even in humans, that first milk, the colostrum is good for uh, for infants. So there's lots of naturally good things in bovine colostrum, but we do something different. So we develop a uh, highly specific vaccine for a targeted pathogen. Uh, a pathogen could be a bacteria or, or a virus. Um, we give that vaccine to the cow um, that's pregnant, and uh, in response to that, they uh, develop uh, polyclonal antibodies, uh, which uh, uh, so that's the hyperimmune word down there, that are expressed in the uh, uh, colostrum. And these have uh, antimicrobial therapeutic uh, uh, benefits without the drawbacks of antibiotics. So you've probably heard of antimicrobial resistance. So as this is not an antibiotic, that is not a problem with this product. And uh, it does, however, achieve uh, toxin neutralization and clears that uh, targeted pathogen from the digestive tract. So in the case of Travelan, we have two vaccines that cover 13 different types of enterotoxigenic E. coli, which is the, the uh, leading cause of uh, travellers' diarrhoea. And on the back of both preclinical and clinical data uh, that we have showing up to 90% effectiveness for preventing uh, travellers' diarrhoea, we have health claims in both uh, Australia and Canada for reduction of the currents and to reduce and relieve diarrhoea and a number of other gut health uh, claims. Unfortunately, we don't have these same claims uh, in, in the US. It's sold as a dietary supplement. And uh, that's the reason why we're developing this product as a drug in the US market in collaboration with the uh, US military. Uh, next slide, please. So these are our clinical programs. For um, a small company that has a, a product generating revenue on the market, we also have uh, a number of clinical programs. And, and these are phase two clinical programs for those of you not familiar with uh, pharmaceutical drug development, you go through preclinical testing, that's both in the lab and animal testing, before you move into human testing. Typically, it's a uh, phase one where you would do uh, a safety study in, in humans for the first time, and then followed by uh, phase two, which will then explore more safety and also efficacy in humans before moving to phase three, a, a larger study or a registration study prior to registering the drug uh, for sale. Uh, these are in phase two, so we're quite well advanced uh, along these um, programs. The first one, Travelan, um, is in, in phase two in conjunction with the, uh, uh, the military. So this is the uh, US Naval uh, Command, so the Navy. And uh, we've just completed dosing uh, that study, and uh, we have to do a, wait for a waiting period before we read out the results. Those results are, are due soon, so that's in uh, June of next year. Um, Travelan itself is also in a separate phase four study. So this is our um, dietary supplement um, being given by the Uniformed Services University, once again funded by the, by the US military, um, in active US and UK military personnel traveling to high risk uh, regions, some 868 subjects, so quite a large uh, study. A third program uh, being funded by the military, another Navy uh, Medical Research Command Collaboration is a, a new product called Camp ETEC. So this is another colostrum-based product, but with a different vaccine for Campylobacter and uh, enterotoxigenic uh, E. coli. We uh, have US FDA IND approval to move ahead with the phase two program. We're just going through the ethics approval process with a view to starting that uh, early in the new calendar year. Uh, the third program is IMM 529, which is uh, another colostrum-based product, but with a different vaccine, this time for Clostridioides difficile infection. Uh, this is a, a, a quite a, a challenging uh, um, uh, disease state in that people get treated with antibiotics and 40% uh, of those uh, get recurrence. That is that they 
get uh, CDI uh, again. And so there's a, a need for a new therapeutic treatments and uh, with a product like ours, which doesn't have the antimicrobial resistance, we're hoping to be able to treat patients without that recurrent effect. So good opportunity for us. We're in the process of manufacturing uh, clinical uh, product as, as we speak, and you'll see that in the milestone slide coming up uh, shortly with a view to filing uh, with the US FDA a pre-IND filing for commencing a phase two study uh, sometime next uh, calendar year. So next uh, slide, please. We had uh, a US uh, market uh, uh, consultancy firm uh, have a look at two of our key programs just to give us an estimate of uh, market size and potential. So this is a, a US market size and potential study only. The first one is for IMM124E or Travelan. Uh, for travellers' diarrhoea. The second is for IMM 529 for Clostridiotis difficile. And I was quite pleased that they came up with roughly the same answer for both uh, for different reasons. US market alone, some US 100 million odd uh, uh, sales potential per annum. So good market opportunities for both of those products. Uh, next slide, please. This, this slide uh, is important for the company. Um, it shows the journey that we've been on. Uh, in the past, you can see the things that we said we were going to do, now highlighted in blue, uh, that they're the things that we've actually completed. Showing in the black are the things that we're anticipating to happen, uh, which we hope uh, at the conclusion of those periods to be able to say that we've done. So we're trying to walk uh, the talk, so to speak, and deliver on the milestones that uh, we anticipate. So as I mentioned before, the Camp Isla back to Camp ETEC program, um, we're waiting on uh, um, FDA approval of that IND amendment for the protocol change with a view to starting the clinical trial um, in next uh, calendar year. We've just completed that uh, uh, dosing of the, the travel and phase two trial, uh, and those results are due in June uh, of next uh, 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 next year. Uh, IMM 529 manufacturing as we speak, the uh, uh, product for the clinical trials and that will be completed before the end of this financial year. And we'll submit that pre IND with the FDA, and uh, we hope to have that approved uh, uh, for moving ahead with uh, clinical trials next uh, calendar year. The Uniform Services University study, uh, we're more than halfway through uh, recruitment of that study, large study, and uh, we hope to complete enrollment and complete the dosing of that uh, during uh, uh, the the first half of uh, 2024. So as you can see, a lot of upcoming milestones, uh, things that are, are value generating uh, for the company in the near term. So uh, move on to the next slide. Uh, that concludes uh, uh, my presentation. I open up for Q&A, but maybe if you can flick to one next slide, not for discussion now, but for those that are interested in the, uh, the technical nature of our uh, technology, this is a list of uh, references, scientific references. The first one is that clinical study showing um, up to 90% effectiveness in preventing travelers' diarrhea and a number of other studies done in conjunction with the US military and in both uh, in the lab and also in uh, mice and in uh, monkeys showing broad spectrum antibacterial activity of uh, travel in. And the last one down the bottom there is the IMM 529 in Clostridioides. So, if you're technically minded, you might like to read those, but uh, I might just pause there, David, and uh, open up for questions. Thanks, Steve. Um, as I said in the beginning, um, there's lots of companies on the ASX that um, are not well known, not well publicised, but are clearly doing interesting things with a lot of catalysts for share price appreciation, but also revenue and growth. Um, and I think... Uh, Imuron sits right in that wheelhouse. As you said at the beginning, you, you, you cash back to essentially your market cap is equal to cash. Um, what, what are the catalysts? What, what if, if you know, you, you've just pitched the story, but what, what's the helicopter pitch? So you, you're back to, you're cash backed, um, you don't need money, you've got all these big catalysts coming up. Why do you think there is a disconnect um, with the market, or is it just that the sector at the moment isn't seeing the love that the lithium sector or gold or other things are, and you've just got to keep your head down and concentrate on your business? Yeah, look, I, I think there is a definitely a sector effect. So I, I, I presented at a uh, an industry conference for a biotech, small, um, not even all small actually, but biotech companies in Australia called BioShares uh, back in July. And 
And these are companies ranging from uh, Telex, which is a $3 billion company, Neuron, $2 billion, down to smaller uh, companies as low as market cap of $5 uh, million. Uh, we're at the lower end of that, but of the 21 companies that presented at that conference, we're one of only uh, 10 at the moment that's showing share price appreciation since the date of that presentation. And some have fallen by as much as 50%. And uh, if, you, if you look at statistically over time, um, we're in a situation where these uh, you know, micro and small cap stocks are, are marked much lower than the, the market as a whole, um, some 50% lower, I think, at the moment. But in, in, in the past, uh, they've actually been valued a little bit higher. Um, so there's a big spread. Uh, between uh, the value of micro and small cap stocks versus the larger stocks at the moment. We've been we've fallen into that. There are some company specific factors that maybe have uh, uh, led us to where we are on, on share price. And, and that's because during that uh, two year uh, pandemic period, we weren't selling any products. Our sales went from $3 million down to essentially zero. And we're just building up uh, now. We did 1.8 million last year. But we're on track to exceed even the highest level of sales we ever did um, prior to the pandemic this year. So certainly the, the sales are doing uh, uh, very well and we're generating cash from that. The three of those programs I mentioned are funded by the US uh, military. So we have a grant funding money from uh, you know, uh, Uncle Sam paying for those uh, phase two clinical programs that I spoke about. And so our cash burn rate is very small. So it's in, in the order of uh, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars a month on average throughout the year. And yet we have seven, eight million dollars in the bank. So we have, we have plenty of cash to, to go forward. But the milestones that are coming up are significant. When you see a readout on a phase two trial in a uh, biotech or pharma company that's positive, and uh, we'll know um, by June of, of next year whether that's the case, typically you see a big inflection point for share price appreciation or or the reverse, obviously, if it's not uh, not successful at that same time. Just touching on the um, the US military and that connection, how did it come about? And and you touched on uh, what it funds, but how important is that relationship? Look, uh, money for progressing programs is obviously important, but more than that, I mean, the US military um, grant money uh, provides two things. Uh, it provides uh, validation of the technology. They wouldn't be putting money into something that they didn't believe in. Two, we get access to some of their um, best researchers. So that Camp E-Tech program that I mentioned, uh, where other than Travel Land, we developed that uh, E. coli vaccine ourselves. The Camp E-Tech vaccine was actually developed by the Navy. So it's their vaccine. We're vaccin vaccinating our cows and our research farm in, in Victoria generating a, uh, a new product that's going into a phase two clinical trial uh, that's being conducted, conducted and funded by the US military. So uh, why, why are they doing this? If, if you look on their websites, um, and it doesn't matter which, whether you're going to the Army or the Navy or any of those military um, websites, you'll see that um, something that might sound as trivial as a traveler's diarrhea is very high on their unmet need list. And that's because there are no drugs approved for doing it. And you can imagine that uh, some of the places that uh, military travel to, um, uh, warm, uh, wet, uh, humid environments, do have traveller's diarrhoea. And it's the number two cause of uh, uh, enteric disease, stopping troops from being able to be active in their field. Uh, so it's a big, big problem for them. And they're coming to us uh, for, for a potential solution. Um, how, how tight is the tightrope in terms of needing to spend money on advertising to generate sales, but also looking at um, how to how to deploy cash uh, in the most effective way towards research and development programs and, and the, the regulatory path. Um, have you seen a shift post-pandemic in how the, the, the marketing sales system works? Look, I um, to be fair to say the company's focus most of its uh, resources um, on R&D and not on sales and marketing. Uh, I've been with the company about 18 months now. Uh, I've come in from a commercial background. So they've worked for much larger companies with uh, leading sales and operations teams with revenue up to 600 million across some 113 countries around the globe. But the way I looked at it is like the, the sales and marketing is not an expense, it's an investment in the in the growth of the brand, the value of that, that uh, uh, franchise. And it, it makes sense to 
invest some money into that program to to create that value, which is something you can have now. Whereas the the clinical programs, while they're very very valuable, so you've got those target hundred million dollar sales revenue potential down the line, they're a few years away. Whereas travel land is something that we can sell today. So I've decided to invest in both in 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 at the same time, and we can do that because we do have the cash to do that. And you can see immediate results. So we've gone from sales of almost zero to uh, 700,000 in FY22 to 1.8 in uh, FY23 and FY24. We're on that trajectory to continuing that uh, same growth uh, uh, profile. So it does make sense to invest our cash in sales and marketing. We are doing that. And yeah, we're, we're still only, yeah, we did, uh, yeah, let's say we do 3 million plus this year on revenue. That's a long, long way away from those 50 and $80 million market potential numbers I showed in that earlier slide. So there's plenty of growth to come and a good reason to continue to invest in sales and marketing. Always intrigued why uh, someone such as yourself leaves a big a big company uh, and drops themselves into a smaller company uh, and where you've really got to roll your sleeves up and get your hands dirty. What was the appeal? Uh, look, I've, I've never been shy of rolling my sleeves up and getting involved hands-on. I do um, prefer to do that. But uh, look, initially, I, I came back to Australia from uh, Canada and prior to that in the US uh, for personal reasons. So I was born in, in South Australia. Um, my kids were getting a bit older and before they got too entrenched into uh, you know, high schools and not wanting to leave uh, living overseas, we wanted to bring them back so they could spend time with their uh, you know, their grandparents, uncles, aunts, cousins, and the like. So fam family reasons for coming back, but there are great companies in, in Australia doing great research, but perhaps uh, the, the, the bit that lets them down is uh, commercialising those discoveries. And I thought that uh, coming back, I'll be able to lend my experience on the commercialisation side of uh, of biotech. And I'm trying to do that with Travelland, but you know, with those other products in the, in the future. Go back 18 months when you uh, jumped into the company and and uh, had been looking probably from afar and doing your due diligence before you landed in. Um, are you excited, more excited now than then about the opportunity that presents itself? Uh, look, look, I am. And that, and that I'm saying that with the benefit of uh, you know, some hindsight. So things I thought could be done, uh, I brought in good people from outside to assist in this process. But yeah, that, that uh, return on investment in sales and marketing is happening uh, even quicker than I thought it would, which is quite exciting. And it didn't take as long to get the uh, clinical programs back up and running again after that hiatus for two years. So that's good. You know, we've been through a few ups and downs with you, know, you can't control how long the FDA take to review things, but we've been through clinical hold in one program, got that off, got an IND approval for travel and phase two trial in record time. It happened in less than a month, which is uh, which is great. Uh, we've, we've completed uh, studies the FDA required in less than six months to get uh, off of clinical hold. So most of the, the, the challenges uh, have been addressed relatively quickly and uh, we're moving ahead. And most importantly for the shareholders and potential investors, we're actually delivering on those anticipated milestones that we say that we're going to do. So you can expect us to continue to do that. Last two questions. You've got plenty of cash. When when do you think, um, and again, not to forecast or look too far ahead, but when do you think you'll need more cash? When does that that moment come where the, the ball starts rolling faster and faster down the hill and that momentum builds and you're needing to deploy cash uh, in in very strategic ways in a in a more sustained fashion. Yeah, look, I remind people of the safe harbor statement I showed before, but I will I will make this uh, comment on uh, uh, capital raising. Look, of of the uh, the Traveland trials and the uh, the Camp Tech trial, they're they're U.S. military funded. Uh, what's not funded is if we're successful in in those programs, so we pass phase two. The next step in the uh, FDA drug approval process is phase three uh, clinical trials. So that, that trial would look more like that phase four study that the Uniform Services University studies uh, is currently doing on travel land. So that's the 868 patient uh, trial, field trial. Uh, it would be more like that. Uh, we're currently unfunded, although we are applying for grants. And uh, if we pass phase two, the next step would be to fund phase three. And if we can't get that through grant money, 
we would look to do that through uh, you know, raising capital. Similarly for IMM 529, which is the cost security audits program, if we are unable to uh, secure grant funding for progressing that, you can see the market potential significant from that slide I presented, uh, the Lumanity Consulting uh, forecast. Uh, we would look to uh, raise capital to uh, move that forward too. That, and how much capital we need to raise depends on how successful we are on uh, continuing to grow travel and sales, which is obviously generating cash for us as, as a company. Final question. Um, what we have seen over certainly the last three or four years um, and on the ASX as well is uh, big pharma don't look at share price. They don't look at um, share price, performance, volume, any of those things. They look at results. Um, and clearly you've got a lot of results coming with products that potentially meet significant unmet needs and fill a, a reasonable gap in, in the market. When does Big Pharma start looking more closely at what you're doing um, and how do those pr discussions progress? Uh, we, we've, we've already made um, you know, Big Pharma, Big Biotech aware of what we're doing, um, just you know, making sure that they're with, they've got us on their radar. So most most of those companies have a watch list, if you like, of companies and technologies that are uh, of interest. But uh, in, in uh, the space that we're operating in, infectious diseases, those companies aren't typically doing their own research there anymore, but we'll look to uh, license in uh, products uh, you know, that have shown uh, proof, of, at least proof of concept. So in our case, that's not uh, things that we've done in the lab or even in uh, animals. That'll be the, the phase two study results. So we're coming up to those uh, inflection points uh, next calendar year. So we'll have phase two results on two programs on both uh, the, the travel and uh, phase two trial and likely also the uh, the Camp e Tech trial. So we've got, we've got results that will be of interest to them and that would be the time for us to have those uh, discussions. Well, a global opportunity, unmet needs, uh, a big market space that you could potentially fit into, and more importantly, significant news flow coming. Certainly a company worth putting on the watch list. Steve, thanks for your time. We'll watch Imuron with interest and look forward to following the story. Yeah, thank you, David, and I do look forward to uh, following up. Thanks, everybody.